Ethan, do you you want to start with your boy? You want to start with old Blake Wesley? My guy, Blake Wesley. Yes. Uh, I would love to. Early in the season, it was a little bit of a struggle, as we kind of predicted. Uh, we both thought he would spend most of his time in Austin, uh, which he did, and we were hoping that he'd get some rotational minutes kind of later in the season. What happened? Exactly that. And Blake Wesley, I don't have his stats pulled up in front of Look, me. Look what I got you, Ethan, if you go back to our restream. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Only averaging basically four and three game of 51% shooting. Yeah, do you have his uh, his turnover stats? Do you know how many turnovers? Let me get you here. I appreciate it. No problem. It, less than one. Less than one. And that's down from two that he had last season. Uh, I know he's not playing as many minutes technically. He's got 18 last year, only 12 this year. But efficiency is up and turnovers are down for Blake Wesley. And I think that's the biggest story for him. Last year, his biggest problem was decision-making. Um, he's making the right passes this year. And defensively, he has really taken up the challenge. And I watched some of his his early like preseason uh, interviews, as well as his interviews as of late. And the theme for him has not changed. At the beginning of the year, he said defense was his biggest focus. And now he's continuing to say defense is his biggest focus. Um, and that's been clear. He's picking up guys full court. He's provided a new spark and energy for us and the defensive uh, second unit that we didn't really have prior to him getting minutes. As much as I like Malachi, who's also struggled at times, um, and it is better in Blake in some cases, defensively it's not even a contest. Blake Wesley's a much better defender, and in transition, he's been dynamite. We saw a couple great dunks, including tonight. So he's not a perfect player. He's not filling up the box score, but he has made strides in his weakest areas um, which is why I'm so high on this young point guard, who most people had written off prior to the year had even started. I think that the way that he's developed this season has been has been. I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, I do know how to describe it. It's been a really good thing, um, but it's been really good to see when you consider that it kind of felt like he might be in Austin for most of the year at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way that it looked in Austin with a lot of successful games, a lot of 20 point scoring games, um, developing a two man game with Dominic Barlow as well down there um, and just getting controlled. I've already said this in, in a lot of our other post games, but he's just honed. He's controlled and he his his basketball IQ is higher. That's mm-hmm. what I would say. Um, and, you know, the college game is very different than the NBA game. Um, it feels eerily reminiscent, and a lot of people may disagree with this, Ethan, but I still see it right now in the little flashes that we got. It feels reminiscent to the development of a DeJounte Murray or a Derek White. I'm not saying he's going to be as good as either of those guys, but I'm just saying that whenever it comes to a young guard uh, playing in the G League, that's kind of a combo guard, too. We mentioned the rotations to get back into the Brooklyn game a little bit. While we didn't see him in the third quarter, then we randomly saw him playing the two next to Trey in the fourth quarter. So uh, a young combo guard that in his second season, you know, you're starting to see some of the stuff that he became consistent with in Austin now that he's getting some spot minutes kind of later in the year. And that's kind of how we introduced DeJounte and Derek into the lineup. If you want to go back into the Spurs memory bank. Mm-hmm. A- absolutely. And and to, to add a little bow to this, just his body language, and how he's carrying himself as well. Like last season, he looked very lackadaisical, very much like a 19 year old, just kind of having fun out there this season. I don't think I see him smile. Like he really yeah. has, has stayed focused and stoic all year long. And I think that that's translating on the court for him. Yeah. He's getting more physical, his defense, his speed, um, the way that he, he keeps pace. Um, it's, it's, it's really night and day, especially Mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, when you compare it to Malachi and that's kind of, that's like the, the flip side of the G league, like as much as it's the G league, that's the type of stuff that when you go down there, like that's why he's able to kind of jump Malachi all of a sudden because he's been kind of honing all of those things down there where maybe Malachi's, you know, he's not able to do it as much just because of his role on the team, but also because of his role on the team and being on the actual roster, he might be a little bit more worried about not making mistakes, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so 
shout out to the Austin Spurs development for for Blake Wesley because if we didn't have him right now, um, it would be even more ugly on the bench. Absolutely, we'd have Devonte out there. <laughs> well, he'd win us the championship, according to yeah, our right. comments comments last post game, Ethan. <laughs> you're right. You're right. We might be way more competitive with my guy Devonte. All right. Well, let's move on, Ethan. Any any final things on Blake? No, sir. He's my guy. I love him. I hope he knows I'm here for him. <laughs> we need to send him that and then see what he thinks. <laughs> well, he's stoic now. He probably wouldn't even watch it. My guy doesn't uh, even get on the true. phone. He wouldn't react. Mm-mm. 